Hi, in this exercise, we're going to follow along in chapter 2 and go through and make some maps using some quantitative data that we're looking at here. You can see here we have a map of the United States, and these are just the lower 48 states using our North American Albert Equal Area Projection. We'll talk about projections a little bit more in chapter 3 here. But you can see here I can open up the attribute table, and this has some of the standard de census data that it comes with. What we're going to map today is average family size. And to go through and do this, we can right mouse click on states and look at properties. Or on the states layer right here within the table of contents, we can double click on it here. And we have here symbology. There's a lot of different ways in which we can display states. We can display them as a single symbol. We can display them in categories if we're trying to display just nominal classifications here. So if we were to look at the state name where nothing has any relationship to another thing here, I can pick a, pick a particular color scheme and display it like this because we don't want to display the areas relative to each other or anything like that. But what we're going to try to look at is map some quantitative data. And I can go down to quantities right here and under fields and the first thing I'm going to look at is the graduated colors. Basically we look at color gradation. So darker is going to be more of something, lighter is less of something. And we can use a number of different color ramps as you see here below. But under value I'm going to go through and map average household size. Yeah, and you can see here, once I go through and put that in, my color ramp and my values are going to be populated. Over to the right here under classification, you can see that there's different classifications I can use to map the same exact data, even though the colors or the classes may be slightly different. If I click on classify, you can see the different gradations that I have right here. You can see my x-axis is my, you can see a basic histogram right here, where my x-axis is going to be my um, average uh, household size, my y-axis is going to be the number, go with the frequency of those. And you can see kind of a standard, uh, you can see a, a standard uh, distribution right here. I can click on quantile, which makes each class appear the same number of times. So if I have 50 states each class and five classes, each class will appear, or each color will appear 10 times. I'm going to go with the quantile right here. Y and you can see what I have here. Over here in my right, I have my label. I can click OK right there, and you can see the states here, like Idaho and California, Utah, Texas, Georgia, and New Jersey, which have the largest household size. States like Montana, North Dakota, Wyoming, and Maine have the smallest. Now, there's a number of other ways, a number of other symbology uh, formula that I can use to do this, too. So I can double click here, and what we have right here, this is called a core plus map, where we color in certain enumeration units based on its value or size or whatever here. But other things I can do is graduated symbols. So I can do the same exact data right here, the same classification techniques, and I can make it graduated symbol, where the smaller dot means the less of something, the larger dot means the more of something. So we're sh so showing the same exact data the same exact way. And we can use graduated symbol maps on top of core plus maps if we want to start to show two different variables on top of each other, or try to show some sort of correlation. It's pretty easy to do right here. I can change my background to no color, and you can see what I'm, I'm starting to look at here. And now here, I have the option here to copy in my states here, and then I can paste the layer. So now I have two different instances of my state's GIS data layer here. So instead of graduated symbols, I can go back here, and I'm going to look at the median age. And I'm going to use a different classification scheme. I'll just go black to white here. Okay, and now you can see here. Okay, so underneath I have the median age in core plus map. Average household size, which is going to be my graduated symbols, is going to be in the circles. So I can start to show two variables on top of each other because with cartography it's very, very difficult to show multiple variables at the same time. After you go through and make these maps, you're also able to start to insert dialog on here, okay? Insert some essential elements of map design. You can see here, I'm in layout view. I can go between different views here. I have data view, and then I have layout view. Okay, up in the top here, up in the top here, you can see my scale, and then here you can see my map that I have right here. And from here, I can go through and start to insert things. I can insert a legend. A north arrow. I can go through and pick up my north arrow here. And you can see here, 
When I go through and add it, this north arrow down here in the bottom right or whatever, when I go to my data view, it's not going to be here, but it's going to be part of the piece of paper that I have. And I can set this to be up 8.5 by 11. I can set it up to be portrait or landscape, depending upon the geographic region that I want to set up. I can go through and insert a, uh, a picture or an object, if you have some sort of logo or whatever, a neat line. I can insert some text, okay, North Carolina. I can enter it here. I'm going to double, ch uh, double click on it and I can go through and change the symbols. You know, I can change it to size 28 font, bold, or whatever I want to do here. Okay, I can center it here. So if I click on North Carolina and then I click on the actual data frame, which is the second thing, I can right mouse click and I have an entirely new context panel where I can go to align center and it's going to center it upon the thing that you clicked, the element that you clicked second. So if I click the text first, uh, if I click the text second, it would have centered the data frame on the North Carolina, but I had I centered this on the data frame. So when you go through the insert button, you can insert titles, text, dynamic text if you really want to, a neat line that goes around the entire map. Obviously, we're going to need a legend at some point in time and a scale bar.